First of all, sorry for my English. I wish I could tell you that I fly in from Azerbaijan, but I am living in exile now. Arif, my husband of 40 years, and I were forced to leave our homeland in 2016. After it was made clear to us that the regime effort to silence us will continue until our death. We joined our daughter Dinara in Netherlands. It's meeting in airport. Dinara was in Netherlands only because in 2009 we were able to secure a soon for her after the regime tried to silence us by threatening to kidnapping our daughter and sell her to human traffickers. We was born in USSR, and the KGB first arrested my husband in 1976. The world was already aware of the horrors in the Soviet Union, so we concentrate our efforts on working from within. I joined an underground dissident movement in the middle of the 1980s and later became one of the founders and the only female member of the Board of National Democratic Movement for Independence Azerbaijan from Soviet Union. After the fall of the Soviet Union, we all have great hopes for future. We believe that we will, could live in independence and democratic Azerbaijan Republic. But in 1993, a general of KGB, the leader of the Communist Party, Heydar Aliyev, became the president of Azerbaijan Republic. And he started a horrible repression already from this time. My wonderful friends, brave officers died in prison after tortures. Heydar Aliyev's government was cemented in blood, torture, and overall violence from the very beginning. Since 1993, the Aliyev's family has been ruling Azerbaijan. We have bloody dictatorship. But we wanted a democratic transition. And we decided that we will fight openly in public, before the eyes of the regime, but also before the eyes of the civil society. And that is why we created non-government organization Institute for Peace in Democracy in 1995. Our institute became very popular in Azerbaijan. People from all over the country ask for our help in case of tortures, forced disappearance, killings, and corruption. We worked on creating a historical archive of state-sponsored repression and violence. We put together a list of prisoners of conscience. We monitored trials. We gathered date of tortures case, and we reported on all of this. It's one of our meetings. It was when it was not so horrible repressions. At the same point, we have a list of more than 700 prisoners of conscience. More than 700 in Azerbaijan, where the population no more than 10 million. We became known also for rewarding judges who pays sentence on political orders with stripped robes. It's our famous judges. It was nice presentation. In 2011, we became aware that more than 60,000 citizens were being illegally deprived of their homes by the regime in our capital, Baku. Believe it or no, this is still happening in 2018. Our investigation revealed that many people had been forced out of their homes and been made homeless. Their homes were bulldozed and they stayed homeless. 
Under the eyes of the police, we managed to publish a report and put together an advocacy campaign online. It's me, it's my colleagues, and as usually, police attacked us. On August 10, 2011, New York Times reported on our efforts, and the next day, President Ilham Aliyev gave the order to destroy our home, which also served as the Institute's office. On the evening, August 11, we too became homeless. We lost everything. It's how they destroyed in the evening. We lost everything, including computer, library, and the most important, our comprehensive archive. On August 11, we were not in Baku, we were here in Norway, but we returned to Baku to continue our struggle. My last duel in Azerbaijan took place after my husband Arif and I were arrested in 2014 following a long-lasting wave of repression after the deputies of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe voted against the resolution political prisoners in Azerbaijan at the January session 2013. Can you imagine special rapporteur from Parliamentary Assembly of Council of Europe on Azerbaijan, Pedro Argamund, from Spain spoke two times during the session. He's saying that there are no political prisons in Azerbaijan. We were in shock. Our institute had contributed significantly to make this resolution possible. The PASSE deputies opened the green light to the most brutal political repression in Azerbaijan. One week later, from February, Four, the arrest had started. Spending no less than three billion euros to buy the European politicians and deputies, our dictator organized horrible repression against human rights defenders, journalists, bloggers, and activists of opposition parties. Only in 2017, 2017, we received information about this international money laundering scam. In May 2018, this month, only four, four deputies of Parliament Assembly of Council of Europe were formally punished. Four. But how many people were arrested during 2013, 2018? How many people were touched in prison? And how many people died? after torches in prison. And the repressions continue till today. Every week we receive information about new arrests. Last week, five guys from opposition party Popular Front was arrested, and one died already after torches. I would like to avoid a detailed recount of Arif's and my days in prison. But I can tell you, we were beaten, torched, and denied medical attention until our health became extremely frail. We received freedom only after great support. It's me, before prison and after, one year. We received freedom only after great support from the international community, with the support of our friends and international human rights organization, with the support of our daughter. Last month in April this year, Azerbaijan dictator Aliyev won yet another president turn in sham elections. This is Aliyev's fourth term since 2003, when he replaced his father in yet another sham election. In Azerbaijan, elections are never free and fair. In Azerbaijan, the run of separation of powers with the justice system serving as a proxy for the dictatorship. 161 prisoners of conscience today complete the picture. Some people stay in prison more than 10 years, some people stay more than 20 years. 
People in detention centers die from tortures regularly. In 2007, you, you can see these boys stay without father now. Both of them died last year in May. He is a famous blogger. He just writes something in Facebook, and he was arrested and touched. He writes in Facebook, I do not want to be slave. Just. It's colonial. They were touched and died. In 2017, many people died after tortures. There are only the seven cases that were able to confirm. This boy was born in 1995 and he died in 2017. It was horrible tortures. I received all the information. So dictator Elham Ali won. He won with the support, with the help of the European and American politicians, to whom he paid a lot of money. In 2015, Alif organized the first European Olympic Games in Baku. Democracies like France, Germany, Great Britain, and this one, Norway, sent the athletes to Baku to take part in these games. Lady Gaga was there. She received two million dollars to think about freedom. I remember her singing Imagine. I remember her song so clear because I was watching from prison. I felt ignored, forgotten, trumped. Arif and I have made a new start now in Netherlands, but we refuse to stay still while people in Azerbaijan continue to be hostages of our dictator. Remember this name. He will guest in Berlin, Paris, London, Washington, this bloody dictator. And his single aim is to continue accumulating wealth and power. I stand here with a request. I ask you people in three countries to help us identify and denounce the powerful and wealthy people who benefit from Azerbaijan's oil-rich kleptocracy. These people visit Norway. They own villas in France, apartments in New York, homes in London. Their children go to the top universities in democratics. Help us raise our voice so that they cannot enjoy their wealth in the West. Help us to raise our voice against this horrible dictatorship. Each week, the people die. I ask for freedom, and that you use your freedom to denounce those who oppress and loot Azerbaijan. The journey into night starts for me and my husband. He now puts his pictures here in the 1970s. It's been more than 40 years. So please help us out of this darkness. We need support and solidarity very much. <laughs>